So if the patient is in standing posture, this exudate will settle in the lower part of this spherical structure, which is an abscess. So if you look at the picture, we can see these things what I'm drawing here is an exudate. So exudate is settling in the lower portion of this pedicle abscess. So now the upper portion is containing air. The lower portion is containing exudate in this spherical structure. And this kind of separation of the exudate uh, with the air we can see if, we, if the patient is standing. And if we take an x-ray of this particular uh, appearance, we get thing known as air fluid level. So I want you to see the x-ray now. If you look at the x-ray, I want you to concentrate here. This patient has an abscess. Now can you tell me where you see abscess? Which lung? Is it the left lung or right lung? This patient has a completely normal right lungs. But if you look at the left lung, we can see a spherical structure, a round structure, almost like a cavity. Now if you look at the cavity, you can see there is a black arrow which is showing the air fluid level. So what is the fluid here? This fluid is nothing but exudate. So as the patient is standing, the exudate will settle on the bottom of the spherical structure which is the abscess. Now once we see some kind, something like that on the x-ray, we can make a definitive diagnosis of lung abscess. And I want you to remember it very well, how to identify a lung abscess if we do, a, if we do take a x-ray. So make sure that we remember these things. Now patient with the lung abscess normally has a severe fever, striking fever, a lot of foul smelling, purulence, putum we can see. Now this foul smelling is a very important keyword for the clinical uh, diagnosis of uh, lung abscess. And here we come to the end of our topic which is lung abscess. So if we want to revise the entire topic, let me quickly discuss lung abscess occur because of mostly the bad dental hygiene or due to aspiration of the gastric content. Lung abscess occur in a person who has a previous lung infection like bronchiasis, pneumonia. Whenever you see a lung abscess which is basically a enclosure where we can see the necrotic tissue plus neutrophils. If we look at the picture here, if the lung as abscess is caused by the aspiration of the gastric content or some bad oral hygiene and the infection is going into the lungs, they most likely should go to the right lungs. And once there is a abscess, abscess will produce a spherical structure which contains exudate, which is a semi-solid fluid. So when the patient is standing, the fluid will try to settle at the bottom of the spherical container like thing and that will separate from the air with a definitive air fluid level which is identification point on any radiological examination. So this is about your lung abscess. Now this part 2 I shall be discussing about the tuberculosis. So this is the first picture about tuberculosis is basically identification of picture. So what we see in these two pictures? If you look at the picture on your left hand side, we can see some tiny red rod like structures. And these tiny red rod like structures are tuberculous bacillus. They are acid first bacillus and that is the acid first stain which is known as Zill Nelson stain. It is basically from the sputum. The patient has tuberculosis. They took the sputum out and they took the stain 
they use the particular stain to stain to identify this bacillus now what is the picture on your right hand side this is a picture which is showing the a classical Langhans giant cells I think all of you know what is a giant cell giant cell is one singular cell is a big cell but that contains numerous nucleus so these structures we can see are nucleus countless numerous all these blue blue stuff are nucleus which is a typical horseshoe pattern that we can typically see in tuberculosis now this is a must know area again how to define a tuberculosis it is a granulomatous disease communicable caused by the mycobacterium tuberculosis if the patient has AIDS infection in that case the organism is known as mycobacterium avium intracellulari so remember this particular point if we discuss a tuberculosis in a patient who has a AIDS infection then the probable organism is mycobacterium avium intracellulari otherwise in most our population the tuberculous agent is mycobacterium tuberculosis I think all of you know that nowadays in the United States there are plenty of cases are reported uh, where the patients are suffering from tuberculosis now these patients are basically elderly patient they are the urban poor populations and most of the patient has some kind of immune deficiencies like AIDS there are certain diseases if that is present in that patient the patient has got more chance of TB like if like if the patient has diabetes if the patient has silicosis if the patient has severe malnutrition the patient is alcoholic or of course if the patient has HIV as I already told you if it is a HIV patient and the patient has tuberculosis what is the most likely organism it is a mycobacterium avium intracellulari tuberculosis are basically two types primary tuberculosis and secondary tuberculosis primary tuberculosis classically occur in the lungs lymph nodes and GIT but secondary tuberculosis can occur anywhere in the body so we are going to discuss first what is a primary tuberculosis all tuberculosis whether it is primary or secondary we get something known as granuloma so what is a granuloma granuloma is a localized aggregate of epithelioid cells don't forget it ever for the rest of your life so how you get this epithelioid cells so let us follow what happens if the patient is infected with a tuberculous bacillus now this tuberculous bacillus the patient will inhale if you can look at the picture here I am trying to draw the picture this is the bacillus the patient is inhaling the bacillus it is going to the lung it can